Hello, my friends. Today I'm going to talk about electional astrology, which is the astrology of picking dates, and we're going to use picking the date of a wedding as a, the example of how to pick a date. Um, now, here's the situation. An astrologer posted on Facebook that she's going to get married. And she's thinking May or October, possibly up to mid-November of 2015. All right, these are the times that she's considering getting married. Um, so uh, this is, you know, something astrologers do. They pick days uh, for major events, and, and it's a lot of fun, and it can be very important to, to get the right date. Um, and she asked other astrologers if they had any ideas on the best date. Well, I was thinking about making this video on electional astrology, and I said, perfect. Somebody posted a uh, request for the birth information. She posted it. I asked her if I could make a tutorial video about it. She said, fine. I said, I would, you know, I'll promote you as well. She said, great, go ahead. Um, so here she is. This is uh, Hillary Young. She has a website, astrologydating.com. Um, and, um, you know, she she's going to get married. She's very excited about it, obviously. Uh, very much in love and interested in seeing what dates other astrologers come up with. So here's what I come up with. Uh, well, how do we do it? Well, there are two things you want to think about. You want to have a good day, obviously, which means the transits, the, the, the positions of the planets on the day of the wedding, we want to be good. That's point number one here is what I'm saying. And point number two, you want this wedding day to have a good synastry, as we call it, relationship back to the natal charts. So you want the day to be good, number one. Number two, you want the day to relate to the people. Um, and usually, uh, or very often, I don't know if it's usual, but very often the astrologer puts more emphasis on making sure that the day is good. And then se of secondary importance might be the relationship back to the people. Now, um, in my approach, if you're picking a day that's all about one person or two or three people, I put a strong emphasis on the relationship of the chart to the individuals as well. For me, that's not so secondary. So, if I'm doing a wedding chart, I want that day to connect to the charts of the individuals. If I'm picking a date for the opening of a movie a pub or other public event, and there's, like say with a movie, there's a director, there's a you know, producer, there are main actors, the, there's so many people involved, so many things. Um, or you could think of other public events which even have fewer individuals at the center of it. Then it's more about that date. Um, but with a wedding, I want strong relationship to the chart. So I have two things I want to do. I want a good day, and I want it to be a good day for them. Now, here's what I do. Um, there's kind of a trick to getting both at the same time, and it's two steps. Step number one, before I start figuring out, is this a good day, and, you know, looking through and seeing what's going on, I first find out what is in the charts of the people involved. Uh, since this is a wedding and there are two people at the center of it, uh, I find out what is special in the relationship of the people and then I activate it. If I'm picking a date for one person, and suppose it's a, a date to, uh, uh, for what? You know, for, for taking an examination to, to pass boards for their profession or, and they want to be at their best. Um, I find out what it is in their chart that's related to the profession and I activate that, you know, find transits to that part of their chart uh, that are positive and enhance and focus on that part of them. Um, so, uh, and, th and that makes sense. You know, we always say if you're doing career, you look at transits to the midheaven. Um, but when it comes to electional, sometimes we sort of forget that. So, um, because we're so much focused on this as an event chart. Okay, let me get back to the basics. It's two steps. Find out what's special in the chart and activate it. Believe it or not, this will, or it's not maybe intuitively obvious, this will also give us a good uh, chart as well, and I'll explain why in a minute. All right, so here's what we do. I have six steps. First of all, of course, get the charts into your program, and I've already done that. 
I'm in the Series 1.3 software. Here's Hillary's chart, um, and here's her fiancé's chart. So I've got those in the program. Obviously, you need to do that. Step number two, how do we begin? Well, again, before I start looking at transits and all that stuff, I'm going to look at a bi wheel, and I'm going to look at a bi wheel with an aspect grid and look at major aspects between their charts, and then I'm also going to look at noviles. Another thing I might do in some cases, if I don't see anything really exciting there, is look at the composite chart. But in this case, we will find something. So this is it. If you first analyze the chart, if it's a wedding, I'm going to analyze the synastry of the two people. Uh, okay, so I've, can we go back to Hillary? Uh, just because I tend to focus on the person that I know or contacted me, the client. I don't know why, it's just a habit. So I could start with his chart just as well. Um, but I'll start with hers. Okay, so a bywheel. So we select a bywheel. And we want Hillary in the middle. Uh, it's just my habit. I tend to put the client or the person I know in the middle. I don't know why. It's just a habit. Put the other person on the outside. Uh, and then I've got my by wheel selections. And what I want to do is see the aspect grid between them. So I select the small wheel and I've got an aspect grid. And also, my next step is I want to see just the major aspects, so I'm going to click on Customize, uh, click on Aspects, and then right here I'll click on Major Aspects Only. So one of the things I love about this serious software is that it's interactive. You don't have to select something, click OK, look at it. You just interactively play with the information. So this customizing is really an interactive tool. Now I've got just the major aspects. And uh, I want, I'm not really excited about squares. I want to look for conjunctions, oppositions, uh, trines, and sextiles with very small orbs. Because if there's a small orb, that would be something special. Do you see anything with a small orb standing out? Uh, boink. Sun, sextile, sun with no orb. Now, orbs are a huge deal to me. Huge, huge, huge. I can't even exaggerate how important they are. Um, for some astrologers, they're not. But to me, it measures the amount of force that's there. When there's no orb, it doesn't get any better. Also, sextiles, I believe, have to do with relating to each other. It's sort of a, it's one of the best aspects you can have. To have an exact sextile between the suns is fantastic. We have found what is special between the people. It's not necessarily romantic. It just, it inclines them to be friends forever. Um, they just can get on the same page and just really connect beautifully. We found it. We have found what we're looking for. That's all we need. If we can find uh, at least two planets or three planets activating the sun, sextile sun, we have their special day. And that's what a wedding is. We want their special day that where the stars align with what is special about them. So all this mythological thinking that we have about the stars aligning is really true. We're going to find a day when the stars align with what's special for them. Okay, we found it. Now, if we don't see it, again, we use our interactive tool. We can click on No Vials over here, and we could just, just see the No Vials, because I, I believe that No Vials are similar to trines and sextiles, they're healing, they're nurturing, they're supportive, they're integrating. Uh, Novals is, is, part, is related to the Navamsa chart in Vedic astrology, which is used for marriage, used for, for healing and for spiritual path. So, you know, where you find wholeness. So, so these are important as well. And when we look at the Novals, we see, okay, it's got uh, his on the left, it tells us, fiancé on the left, Hillary on on the bottom, so this is Hillary's son, by Novile, his Mars. So we're getting, with the sun, uh, picking up a, um, a by Novile with a small orb of about a half a degree, a little over half a degree, um, seems to reinforce the power of this sun-sun. So it looks like we're really got something fantastic here. 
Uh, so now I'm just going to cancel out of all this. Uh, cancel. And now I want to select uh, just a normal bi-wheel. So I've got a bi-wheel selected for them, and I click OK. So I've selected the bi-wheel, and I've finished our step two. Let's go back to our notes. And we have interactively, as you saw, clicking back and forth, we've selected that bi-wheel, we looked at the aspect grid, oops, a little typo there, it should be select, we selected major aspects only, we found the special K, the special aspect, in our case, sun, sextile, sun. So, step two is done. We found out the special thing in their charts. And we also looked at the novials, and we found that. Now, what I do, I could stop there and go on to um, step four, but this, you might say this step three is kind of optional, but uh, I like to do it. Step three is where I go back to each chart and I interactively play with the individual charts. Um, and I like to see the trine, sextiles, and novals just to get a better picture of it, just from each individual chart. So I'm going to go back to Hillary's chart, and I want to look at her son, uh, which is 6 Cancer 37. I'm going to right click, uh, click on Customize, click on Aspects, and I notice with my usual aspects, I don't see any trines or sextiles coming out of the sun. Again, I'm doing the same thing I did with the bi-wheel, clicking on Novials with large orbs to see if there are any Novials from her sun and there's a thin line, meaning it's weak, going from Sun to the North Node. Not much. So, she doesn't have any additional sextiles, trines, or novials to her Sun. Um, now, he does, and, and this will help show you why I'm looking at this. I'm going to cancel out of all this. Go to his chart. Right-click on his chart. Go to Customize Aspects and see what's going on with his son. Well, there's so many lines here, it gets confusing. Uh, but if I look at this carefully, I see 6 Virgo is going to his ascendant. His son is sextile his ascendant. And it's very close. Virgo to Scorpio. So remember that her son is 6 Cancer. So her son is sextile his son, and then his son is sextile his ascendant means that her son is trying his ascendant. <clears throat> um, we probably missed that when we were looking at the bywheel, or we, maybe you noticed it and I missed it. Um, but this is even better than we thought. Not only is her son sextile his son, but it's trying his ascendant. So her son is tying up with his son's sextile ascendant. And those sextiles are exact. Her son is 6 Cancer 37, his is 6 Virgo 37. So now, I click on Novials, Large Orbs, and I look at his sun, and I find out that he has sun, Novile Moon, that blue line, means they're 40 degrees apart. Um, so his sun is sextile the ascendant, it's also Novile his moon. He has a beautiful sun uh, for nurturing support. There's a good chance he's involved in a helping profession, community service, you know, possibly teaching or counseling. Um, He's got that kind of personality with this novile. This is um, something that most astrologers don't use, um, but, but I do. Uh, in any case, I want to see more detail about this beautiful sun sextile sun. Okay, so I play with that to get some more information. That's an optional step. You don't really need to do that. Um, I want to just show you one more thing before we move on. Here's the bi wheel with her son at 6 Cancer 37 and his son at 6 Virgo 37. There's that exact sextile. Just wanted to show that to you. Uh, it might help some, some of you astrologers out there to see it in a bi wheel. And there's his ascendant at 6 Scorpio. So if you're looking at a bi wheel and you start looking at all these planets, you can go dizzy trying to find these things. And that's why I'm showing you these interactive tools to zero in and find something special uh, relatively fast and easily and and we're going to focus on that. I'm going to show you one more fun thing and then we'll move on. 
but here's a wheel style that shows the position of her son to the second, six cancer thirty six fifty, and his is six Scorpio, a uh, six Virgo thirty six forty seven. <clears throat> Their sons are sextile each other basically almost to the second of arc. To give you an idea of how exact this is, I could go to time adjust, jump one minute. And now his son is to the second, um, exactly sextile her son. Just out of just kind of fun. Now it's it's moving away a minute later. The point is, if they were born ten minutes apart, if he was born five minutes later and she was born five minutes earlier, that sextile would be even weaker. They were born at the almost the exact moment of a perfect sextile between their sons. Uh, just to show how special this is. I just thought I'd show you that. Well, let's move on here. Um, we found, bottom line, we have found something fantastically wonderful in their charts. Uh, the sun sextile the sun. If you're not into novils, you see the sun sextile sun is exact. Also picks up his ascendant with trines, trying to her sun sextile his sun. We found it. All right. Now, how do we pick the date? Let's move on here. The way we pick the date... Um, we're up to step four, is we use the timeline. And we customize it to just get transits <coughs> to the planet we want. That's it. Um, and, and we've got our date. So, um, well, and then we'll look at the chart. But basically, that, that's all there is to it. So going back to Sirius, <coughs> we can do... E if the orb is a little bit large, we didn't find anything that special... We might have to do it twice, do it, do it to one person, do trans to one, and then to the other. In this case, the, the aspect is exact. So going back to Hillary's chart, if I can find, say, Venus or Jupiter is making a sextile or a trine to her son, then obviously it's also aspecting his son. So I can use either chart. Um, if I, if I get a transit to one, I get a transit to the other one. And also, if I get two planets transiting aspect to her sun, they're both aspecting his sun, and they're aspected to each other. And that's what gives us the beautiful chart, because you have the aspect in the transiting chart, also aspected the natal chart. As soon as you get more than one planet aspecting the natal chart, you're going to have a good event chart as well. well. Let me show you. Go to Forecast, Timeline Format, I do transit to natal. Now, I select this guy here. Planets plus asteroids, no birth time. This is my playground where I just do whatever I want. Um, I don't want to mess up these standard things. So I use this um, asteroid thing, and then I customize it. And I've already set it up. What I did is I only do her sun, because I don't care about the other planets. And I've got Sun through Pluto. I don't want the Moon because it moves so fast. Uh, I can use the Moon when I'm narrowing down. And for aspects, I've got Conjunction, Opposition, Trine, Sextile, and I also put in the Noviles by having Harmonic. And I put what you might call like half Noviles or double Noviles, which is the 18th Harmonic. Um, because I like to use these Harmonic things. Not a, Most astrologers probably don't. But I do, so I put those in there as well. And the ninth harmonic means the noviles, binoviles, quad noviles. And then 18th harmonic is multiples of 20 degrees. Um, basically, you're, you're getting like harmonics or uh, subtones of the basic thing. Um, anyway, noviles were a big deal, or still are a big deal in Vedic astrology. I think they're important, and I also use these as well. So... Conjunction, opposition, trine, sextile. I'm going to also do 9th and 18th. Uh, you can leave those out if you want to. I don't recommend you leave them out, but I know a lot of astrologers are going to leave them out. And we'll see if we can get a good date. And uh, I had already selected this. I'll just cancel. Um, so it's very easy. Oh, let me show you that again. If I go back to customize, all you do is you select an item like that, and then on the right side, it, you decide whether it's an angle you know, like if it's 90 degrees as a square, or is it a harmonic, you put the number in there, it updates it, you check it, and you have it. Just to show you how that customizes. Anyway, it's very simple. You just select what you want. 
And now I'll run it for 2015. She said May. Let me start April 1st, 2015. Run it for three months. I had already entered here Honolulu, Hawaii. They're getting um, married somewhere in Hawaii. I think it's Maui Island. But um, I just want to have the right time of day, the right time zone for now. Um, so I just put Honolulu, Hawaii is good enough for now. We're just well, If we get down to a, an exact moment or something, we can get more particular. And here we've got April, May, June. And... Uh, Here's, for example, Mars sextile the sun, this is Hillary's sun, on April 9. Um, if we don't want to use the ninths, then we leave all this out. Uh, I could just right-click and remove the noviles, and you'd see that. But anyway, I've got them in there because I think they're important. Here's Venus conjunct her sun, which would mean sextile his sun, May 13th. But what I really want to do is get two planets. I don't want just one. I want two. Now, maybe I can sneak the moon into this, um, if it's moving fast enough. Um, so, you, sometimes you can just use one and hope you get the moon, then you have Venus and moon, but you need at least two planets activating the special thing. One is not enough, because if you have two, it means that those planets are also aspected to each other in the chart. Well, the best I see is April 25, 26. Um, well, that's an 18th. It's not that exciting. But this is Sun Sextile Sun, which is our special thing. So I'm kind of interested in this April 26th because it's a repeat of what the special thing is in the charts. Hmm, if I could get the moon into there, that would be good. Um, anyway, I'm not seeing a lot that's getting me very excited. If I use the no vials, I like April 8th. April 8th and 9th is the best. Maybe the 26th. Well, let me go over to November. I'll just jump over three months. I didn't get there another three months. October. Well, she's got Neptune is trying her son. Uh, would be aspecting his son. That's nice. So at least I've got an outer planet, but I have to get into November 5th looks good. If I use no vials, I like November 5th. I think the best date I've seen so far if I use no vials is Venus and Mars are two-ninths the Sun on November 5th. Now there's one more catch. A lot of people don't get married on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Um, and she said Friday through Sunday. So let's hope these dates fit. So I can go into the calendar feature uh, of Sirius. Um, here it is, calendar. And I can click on this fast ways to click on the year, and it lets me just jump to another year. You can just use any calendar. I mean, there's calendars all over the place. Calendars that come with Windows and Macs and everything. Anyway, use this one, and now I'll go over to April. We said April 8th. Uh-oh, Wednesday. No good. 25th, that day of the sextile is okay. It's on the weekend. So that's out. I've only got April 25th, and then going all the way up to November... And this is towards the time, end of the time period. November 5th is a Thursday. The 6th is towards the end of this. Uh, not so great. Maybe the 6th. Maybe early on the 6th. Um, so I'm down to two days that look good. November 6th and April 25th, maybe. All right. Not looking so great. I was hoping to find several planets all lined up on a Saturday. Let's see what happens. Let's try the April 25th. So what I'll do at this point, I found my two days. Um, well, in this case, two days. April 25th and November 5th. Um, or November 6th, I guess I have to go to, to get to, to a Friday. Um, so in our notes here, uh, I make a note that we found April 8th and 25th. We also found November 6th. But April 8th is a Wednesday. Well, April 25th is only one aspect, but let's give it a try. Let's go ahead and try April 25th. Maybe it's better than we thought. Maybe we can get the moon involved. So far, I'm not so excited about it, but I'm going to add a chart 
for for the event for the possible date April 25th so that's the next thing we do oh I'll just call it wedding day wedding wedding day April 25th 2015 we'll just do 12 noon in somewhere in Hawaii um, on a little Hawaii uh, that's fine. No, I won't even bother to save it. I'm just playing around with this chart. And there we have a possible wedding day. All right. Well, I want the sun to line up with their suns. That's why I picked this day. If you remember, it was a sun with sextile, her sun. Well, if I go back and look at her sun again, it's 6 Cancer 37. My wedding day chart is over a degree earlier. It's really happening on the 26th. I'll go to time adjust and just jump this over one day. And I'll click on save. <coughs> time adjust is this thing up here. I could also go back to the data entry screen. And it's actually April 26th, which is a Sunday, as we remember. So we're still okay. Um, and there's the sun uh, where we want it. Now what do we do? Okay, so we've got the sun where we want it. Not so great because I would like more, but what is beautiful about this is that the sun is sextile the sun, and we have a sun sextile. You'll see. The suns are all sextile each other, right? But it's still not that special. What do we do next? Um, next step. Select the sixth or ninth harmonic charts of the person's chart, in this case we have two people, and the event, um, in this case we have three art charts, and then the last step is we select a tri-wheel for the event chart and we time adjust. That's it. So I've given you the steps, all six steps to find the date. There are, there are very specific things you can do to speed up this process so you're not running around all over the place doing a million different things. Okay. We want the 6th or ninth harmonic charts because this will show us the sextiles and trines if we do 6th. If we do ninth, it will also show us noviles. I'm going to go ahead and do noviles. You'll get similar result if you do 6th uh, harmonic. So I've already selected the ninth harmonic charts for Hillary and for the fiancé. Um, I'm going to select the uh, ninth harmonic for the wedding day. So I've already got the ninth harmonic for those two. <clears throat> I'm looking at the wedding day chart. I select harmonic chart. I select nine. And now, <clears throat> from the wedding chart, you must do it from the event chart. You can't do it from the individuals. I'll show you why. I select the triwheel as my next step. Again, these are very specific tools. There's lots of ways to pick out dates. You know, you, uh, there are other valid ways. I'm just showing you one set of tools that I use that I find really is fantastic <clears throat> but there are other other ways of going about it. And I'll do a triwheel and I'll put the ninth harmonic, Hillary 9 Hillary fiance 9. I'm doing the ninth harmonics because these harmonic charts will show you the things lined up. You don't have to have your eye run all over the chart wheel. <clears throat> you just look for it lined up and the wedding day. This is a fantastic tool for narrowing down the day. And I click OK. And there's my triwheel. Now the reason why this is so fantastic is because <clears throat> remember what this is all about is the sun sextile sun. Here's I've got Hillary in the middle, Hillary ninth harmonic in the middle. Uh, the lady, the man, the wedding day. Here's Hillary's, here's the lady's son, exactly opposite, 29 Leo 32, exactly opposite the man's son, 29 Aquarius 31, because the trine six tiles and everything will line up as conjunctions or oppositions. It's just magic. Don't worry about it if you don't know, don't, don't let the numbers scare you if you're an astrologer but you don't like get scared by all these fancy numbers. All you have to know is that they're going to line up as conjunctions or oppositions. There's the exact sextile converted into an exact opposition. There's the transiting sun, <clears throat> um, very close to his sun. Now, there is one thing to be aware of. 
if there's a nine degree orb in the ninth harmonic, it's actually one degree in the real chart. Everything's blown up nine times. <clears throat> so you allow larger orbs than normal. A two degree orb with the sun at 27, two degrees before the sun, means it's actually very close. And he had sun moon nova, which means his moon is there. Uh, and guess what? We are lucky, lucky, lucky. There's the transiting moon right on it. We now have all lined up her sun in the middle, his sun directly opposite in the next wheel, his moon also in the next wheel, <clears throat> also his midheaven and ascendant Mars are all in this area from 24 degrees Leo to 1 degree Virgo. We allow about 9 degrees actually, so uh, which is 1 degree in the actual chart, so they're all lined up and transiting moon. Both suns, all three suns, and two of the moons. We have three charts, one, two, three suns, two of the moons, including the transiting sun and moon, all lined up. What this means is that they're all in these ninth and eighteenth harmonic aspects to each other, um, all these soft combinations, reinforced by the sun, sextile sun, we have her, I think her son is trying his ascendant, six dollars his son. We'll find out that the transiting son is actually opposite his ascendant. So there's a lot of basic aspects involved as well, and we have the perfect chart. Because by luck, the moon is there as well. Now, what we do is we click OK. <clears throat> this means that the moon is in ninth harmonic to her son. Um lined up right on it, which is good. Now we do the time adjust. We click on interactive chart adjust, and this is why you have to be looking at the wedding day, because you're going to adjust the time of the chart you're on, and we're on the wedding day chart. That's our, our chart we selected this from. So we click on time adjust, and let's see what happens if we move an hour later. We move an hour later, and the moon moves up to 3 Virgo, still close. I like it actually at noon because it lines up more exactly. I'll go back an hour. Now we're back to the original noon time. <clears throat> the moon is right on the two suns and the transiting sun very close. I go an hour earlier and the moon is at 24 Leo which is picking up the moon Mars which is also okay and applying. So we found it between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. on uh, April, what date am I on here? April 26th. That's about a week before the month of May that she wanted. Um, hopefully that still fits in well. It's a Sunday. It's a very, very, very special day when their special sextile is highlighted and illuminated, you might say, by the transits. We found it. There it is. And I showed you the tools. Um, that, that I used uh, to create this. And just as a final summary of the whole thing, I could do a tri-wheel just to show the final result of what we've got here. I'm actually done at this point. <clears throat> I can do the tri-wheel and I'll go back to the natals just to see the real actual charts. There's the lady, there's the man, and there's the wedding day. We found it. April 26, 12 noon. Um, and we'll just click OK, and if you look at this thing for a while just to verify what's going on, you'll see here's the transiting sun at 6 Taurus. Um, he is in the middle. <clears throat> there's his sun and his ascendant. So there's transiting sun on his 7th house cusp, 6 Taurus, 6 Virgo, 6 Scorpio. Um, so the transiting sun, sextile her sun, Sextile his son, sextile his ascendant, um, means you've got trines and sextiles going all over the place between the sons and the ascendants. Um, uh, you, you know, you might want to say, well, where's Venus? You know, get some Venus into this. Uh, well, Venus at 17 Gemini, um, you know, if you look around for a while, you'll notice that it's sextile the transiting moon. Uh, with a degree orb, and that Venus was one of the things we saw in the timeline that was tying up. So when you get a lot of these things all tied up together in noviles and sextiles, 
Some of them will reduce down to basic aspects. We've got a nice little sextile there. Applying, it'll get stronger through the day, <clears throat> which is nice. Um, so anyway, it's a, it's a very, very special day. And one more thing, if you're into the harmonic stuff, this is really wild. Here's this sun at 6 Cancer. We had 20 degrees. 20 degrees is half of a novile, a third of a sextile. Anyway, you had 20 degrees, you get a moon at 26 Cancer. You had 20 degrees, you get, uh, would you get 16 Leo, which is transiting moon. At 20 degrees, you get 6 Virgo, which is his sun. You had um, 20 degrees, you get his Mars. I mean, it's you keep adding 20 degrees all the way around. It's part of the the beauty of this if you're into the harmonic level. And if you're not into the harmonic level, you've got all these beautiful trines and sextiles, transiting sun opposite his ascendant. We found the great day. There it is. Uh, now, I don't know if Hillary will use this or not, but anyway, this is, I did this more as... Uh, just a demonstration of how to pick days. And we're done. That's it. We did it. Now, I'll say one last thing, and I'm done. Uh, let me go back to our notes. Here you have the summary. You, know, you can stop this video and make notes about this if you want. You know, These are the steps. Uh, different astrologers do things in different ways. This is just, you know, astrology is more of an art than a science at this point. And I'm just showing you... You know, one artist, this is how one artist goes about it, and, and instead of paints and canvas, you have your software, and I've shown you the software that I use, the software becomes an integral part of, of how you function, the interactive use, the way you bring things up, um, one set of tools, you know, just one artist, you know, at his canvas, and the way, way I go about it. Last final note, and, and I'm finally done. Uh, one thing that a lot of astrologers will get concerned about is the bad things. If we look at this for a while, you're going to notice that transiting Neptune is opposite his Venus. And some astrologers are going to say, transiting Neptune opposite his Venus, David doesn't know what he's talking about. He's going to, the, the man um, is under illusion, this marriage could dissolve, Neptune loses structure, you want nice Saturn sextiles, it's bad chart, terrible... I don't care about all that sun special stuff. It's terrible. Also, transiting Venus is square her Uranus. And they might say, it's a square. You don't want squares. Venus Uranus, disruption. Overnight, he's under illusion. She's getting upset. This marriage lasts a week and it's all over. And they'll say it's a terrible day. Um, so, you know, it's different theories. Now, the theory that I use is that I look for something special. Something wonderful, with the stars aligned, and it's your day, and I think I found a special day. Now, Neptune opposite Venus could be all those bad things, doesn't have to be, it's also romantic, which is something we want, we want some romance in this, we want some magic, this is in Hawaii, this could be incredible, um, Venus Uranus isn't necessarily bad, um, well, squares are not necessarily bad. So what I do is I look for the special, strong, special thing, and then the other things that come along, that's the dance of life. That's why we're led into new things and our lives evolve in different ways, and uh, we meet people, we have children, all these different experiences that aren't necessarily what we planned and how we thought things would work out. Um, it's an adventure. And... And this is part of the adventure that, that develops. Um, and the strength of the good aspects will help you channel those well. But there's no such thing as a perfect day. And without some pizzazz and zip, and you're just looking for everything to be lukewarm and nothing to disrupt it, it it's, I just go for the special day, and, and the people have to be strong and, 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 and handle it and move forward. I think that's what life's about. So, anyway, different philosophies, different ideas, but... If you're the kind of astrologer who just doesn't want those things, you know, I respect that. There are different points of view. I don't think we have any perfect data to prove who's right or wrong at this point. Um, so, you know, th th those are other considerations. So I've shown you how I have done, how I do it and what I think is important. I would, you know, advise the clients on if they want detailed information on some of the things that are brought into this and that they should be aware of. Um, but that's how I do it. Find the special day, and then whatever else comes along, comes along. I actually am 
I'm not afraid of the Neptune Venus personally or the Venus Uranus. I'm kind of happy that it's there to some extent um, because it adds some magic and romance to this. And I started out with the suns, which is not. So it, it doesn't concern me. There are always going to be things like that that um, give the opportunity for growth, development, and, and real excitement and, and uh, moving forward in your life. Okay, you got the idea. I'm at 40 minutes. This is a long video. I've talked long enough. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, you could watch that again if you need to, and see the exact steps if you if you want to really get good at this that I go through to pick a date. So it's a long video. I'm talking a lot, but in less than an hour, you've got a picture of how to go about to pick a date. I use the wedding as an example. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got a lot out of it. Take care. God bless. Namaste.